Black Power Fight, and Angry Tet Knight. I am, as always, your host, Christopher Paul Dugdale, MEDMA. We are Duncanville High School in these United States, and today is April 6, 2021. And on this date in history in 1974, Hank Aaron set the record for the all-time home run record. That's a lot of home runs. More than, more than I've done. Uh, Malcolm X, uh, he was a member of the Nation of Islam or Black Muslims. Uh, he was born Malcolm Little. Uh, his dad was a Baptist minister who was lynched by the KKK and hung on a tree right by his house. Uh, in his teens, he got into trouble and went to jail for uh, robbery. And while he was in prison, he, uh, he converted to Islam. Uh, he believed that... Uh, that African Americans should separate themselves from white society. Uh, he is a symbol for black power. Uh, later on, he will make a Hajj to uh, to Mecca, and whenever he gets there, he finds out that there are white and black people living together in harmony. And when he comes back, he breaks from the Nation of Islam, believing that an integrated society is possible. He also broke with the Nation of Islam because upon visiting Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam, he found that he was having an affair with several women and he thought that that was against all the teachings of the Nation of Islam. Uh, three members of the Nation of Islam shot and killed him. In Selma, Alabama, uh, several people were planning a protest to march from Selma to Montgomery. Uh, while organizing in the streets, the uh, the whole the whole thought was the the protest would start first in Selma, Alabama, and they would have kids protest because they could go to jail just like their parents could. But now no one would be in danger of losing their homes. Uh, the police turned on them and sent out attack dogs after the children and called and hit them with fire hoses. The fire hoses were so powerful it could strip the uh, bark off of trees. So after several of these attacks by the police and fire department on the African-American youth of Selma, Alabama, they planned to march to from Selma to Montgomery. Uh... On Bloody Sunday, the sheriff uh, stopped the uh, protesters and demonstrators on the bridge on the way out of town, told them to go home, and the uh, the marchers just stand stood there. So he went after them with a bunch of police in riot gear, maced them, and beat them uh, on national television. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson went on television and well, basically called out the city and the horrible uh, treatment of the people and ended his statement with, and we shall overcome. The following day, he pressured Congress to pass the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This let the Attorney General send federal, exam federal examiners to register qualified voters in the South, and in a short period of time, 250,000 new voters were registered to vote. Uh, Stokely Carmichael, he was a leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Uh, he broke with the with SNCC and pushed for uh, Black Power. Uh, if you remember on yesterday's notes, uh, I mentioned uh, James Meredith was an Air Force uh, veteran who went to the University of Mississippi, and uh, there was a riot that killed several marshals, and the Army escorted him through graduation. Well. During that ordeal, he decided to do a march against fear through the state of, uh, of Mississippi. And on the first day, he was shot in the leg. Uh, at that point, uh, SNCC and the S SCLC, so Stokely Carmichael, leader of the Student Nonviolent Courting Committee, and Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the leader of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, 
continued the march. Uh, they were attacked several times along the way. Uh, they were maced several times and, uh, well, anyway, so he, he starts pushing for black power. Uh, this is controlling the social, political, and economic direction for the struggle for equality. Uh, this stresses pride in black culture and is against cultural assimilation. He will also later uh, convert to Islam. So, there's a major race, race riot in Watts. That's a neighborhood in Los Angeles. It lasted for six days. 34 people died and a thousand buildings were destroyed. At the same time, within a few weeks, in Detroit, the army sent tanks and soldiers to get control of a riot. And by 1965, 70% of African Americans lived in urban ghettos. They created the Kerner Commission to try and prevent further urban riots. Uh, they decided that the uh, problem was white society and racism. So they pushed to create 2 million new inner city jobs and 6 million new public housing units to try and fix this. And it does do some things to make it better, but there's still some major problems. Now, a couple terms you've heard before. Hispanic just means these are people from any Spanish-speaking country. The term Latino is anyone from Latin America. That would include the Caribbean, that includes Central America, and that would include South America. So you could be Brazilian and be Latino, and even though you're not Hispanic. You could also be Haitian and be technically of French origin and still be Latino but not Hispanic. So just thought I would give you that type of clarification. Uh, Cesar Chavez, that is him to the left. Uh, he followed MLK's lead in nonviolent passive resistance. Uh, he followed a lot of the teachings of Henry David Thoreau, including the uh, hunger strikes. In fact, his hunger strikes were so uh, well were so effective and controversial that he nearly died a few times from not eating during these hunger strikes. Along with the help of Dolores Huerta, he helped form the United Farm Workers. Uh, they organized a boycott of table grapes and uh, got enough attention across the nation to uh, improve wages and working conditions for, uh, for migrant workers. And migrant workers uh, are just people that move from location to location. That can be in the, si in the same country looking for work. So, in 1961, Native Americans issued the Declaration of Indian Purpose. Uh, they wanted to have better economic opportunities on reservations. They went to court and they won a number of land and water rights that were part of treaties in, in the uh, past that had just been ignored. Uh, Native American unemployment was 10 times the average rate of normal Americans, and life expectancy was about 20 years less than the average American. And you were 100 times more likely to kill yourself if you were a Native American than if you were any other type of uh, race or ethnic group in the United States. Uh, at about the same time, a movement was started called the American Indian Movement, or AIM. Uh, this is a militant Native American group that wanted independence from mainstream society. So this has a lot of similarity to uh, the black Muslims. Uh, this would also be supported by uh, Marcus Garvey and uh, Booker T. Washington, if you're looking over time. Uh, at Alcatraz, 89, 89 uh, members of the American Indian Movement claimed the island by right of discovery. Now, this should have been kind of funny since, uh, at the very least, amusing to Americans since uh, Europeans came over and claimed the Americas by right of discovery, even though about a, about 100 million people lived over here. Uh, they kept the island for uh, 19 months. In fact, right now, if you go to take a tour of Alcatraz, you'll find that uh, a Native American group actually uh, runs the uh, museum. Uh, Wounded Knee 
1973, uh, AIM members occupied Wounded Knee, South Dakota for 70 days. Now, if you remember 80 years earlier, there was a major clash with the, uh, with the police, or not with the police, but with the army that led to a horrible massacre. So AIM controlled the city for, uh, for 70 days, and the FBI got into a fight with them and ended up killing two Native Americans. So history repeats itself, and once again, the government kills Native Americans. Uh, the Gay Liberation Front. Uh, this is started after the Stonewall Riot. Uh, this is whenever uh, police raided a gay bar in New York in 1969, and hundreds of people were arrested, and there were uh, fights in the street of New York. As a result of uh, the Stonewall Riot, this leads to the creation of over 800 uh, gay organizations within the next four years in the United States. Uh, the Philadelphia Plan. That is, on their left-hand side, that is Arthur Fletcher. And they created a program called Affirmative Action. And this required businesses with government contracts to have a certain number of African Americans employed. Uh, this was in an effort to try and break the cycle where the government only did business with white companies. And it's been rather controversial over the years. And it's still used to a certain degree today, although it's more minorities than it is with just African Americans. The Black Panthers, they're started by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. This is a militant African-American group that thought that a revolution was needed to get equal rights. Most people see them or remember them for uh, violence, patrolling the streets with baseball bats, bats and shotguns, and runs with the police. But the truth is, uh, they also started a breakfast program in schools that fed over 10,000 kids at the time and many of the federal programs to feed students as a result of the actions of the Black Panthers. Uh, they will fall apart in the mid-1970s, uh, shortly after their split. So, the Chicago Movement. A lot of people were upset that all MLK did was fight to end segregation in public places, and fight for voting rights. But he never really did anything to fight economic conditions. By the way, I'm being facetious and sarcastic there if you didn't understand. So to try and help with economic problems, he moved into a slum apartment in Chicago to raise awareness about the conditions of uh, people living in poor housing. Uh, he threatened a march on, uh, on the city of Chicago. And Mayor Daley, unlike several Southern uh, political leaders, sent the police to protect the marchers. And he met with MLK to try and clean up the slums. So some actual eff efforts were made to try and improve conditions in some northern cities like Chicago. By the way, this was not always the case. So... Uh, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. goes to Memphis to help with a strike with sanitation workers in the city. African American sanitation workers uh, were paid about a quarter of what the white, white workers were paid. One evening while going into his hotel room in Memphis, Tennessee, he is shot by the man on the left, James Earl Ray, April 4th, 1968. Uh, there was mourning across the United States and riots in over 100 cities. In honor of MLK, Congress passes the Civil Rights Act of 1968, which contained a fair housing provision. It was nearly a year before uh, James Earl Ray was uh, captured, and he was captured by police in uh, London about a year later. Uh, he died in jail. The Tet Offensive. By 1968, the majority of the fighting in Vietnam had stopped. 
Uh, there were a few skirmishes now and then. The North Vietnamese government uh, came to uh, the United States and requested, since the fighting was just about over, an opportunity for the Vietnamese people to come together to celebrate Tet, which is the Vietnamese New Year. So U.S. forces actually disarmed a, a number of their troops on that day so that the, uh, the Vietnamese could celebrate together and there would be no threat to end, uh, to end their celebration. And it was on this day, on January 30th, 1968, that the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army launched a massive surprise attack known as the Tet Offensive. It hit almost every major U.S. base and many of the southern uh, South Vietnam's major cities. Uh, within a few hours, U.S. forces overwhelmed the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army. Uh, it was a military disaster for the communists, but it was a political victory for the, the uh, Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army. Uh, it shocked Americans because LBJ and the military said that the war was over. Uh, there are several famous things that happened during this. In the middle shot on the left-hand side, uh, the man who's wearing the plaid shirt with his hands tied behind his back was executed on national television. Uh, this really soured the entire country's uh, mood towards the Vietnam War, and uh, LBJ, as a result of this, will not run for a third term. It was all but assured that he would have run and probably have won had it not been for this. So there's two major groups in the United States. On the one hand, you have the Doves, and they wanted the U.S. to end the war. At the same time, you had the Hawks that felt that the U.S. should stay and fight. Uh, the Doves generally were people that were pacifist and people that didn't want to get involved in the war, and the Hawks were people that either made money off of the war or had family members that had died in the war and didn't want them to die for nothing. Uh, Robert Kennedy, also known as RFK, or Bobby Kennedy, again, a very confusing set of nicknames, uh, he ran as a dove in the 1968 presidential election. Uh, he was starting to gain a lot of ground on Hubert Humphrey, and while he was in Los Angeles uh, speaking in a hotel, he went through the kitchen and was shot by a man by the name of Sirhan Sirhan, who fired his gun about eight times. Uh, two of the bullets ended up in Bobby, and the rest ended up in the walls and the ceiling of the uh, kitchen. Uh, this is uh, on June 4th, 1968, two months to the day after uh, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. Uh, between RFK's assassination and a, uh, a clash between the police and the Yippies at the Democratic National Convention uh, really ruined any chance that the Democrats had of winning the 1968 election. Uh, the Yippies were a controversial group of uh, students who uh, wanted to uh, legalize all drugs, have students run schools, uh, unregulate and legalize all forms of sex, and get rid of all money. The country was in disarray. So, in the election of 1968, uh, Richard Milhouse Nixon promised to end the Vietnam War which he does uh, four years and about two weeks after he gets elected, so during his second term. Uh, he promised to appoint a Southern Vice President and Supreme Court Justice, and he did. He had uh, Spiro Agnew as his Vice President, and he also appointed a Supreme Court Justice from the South. Uh, he thought that he appealed to a group called the Silent Majority. Uh, this is a white middle class who is tired of liberal politics and radical culture of the 1960s. Uh, this is kind of the same kind of claim as Harding had a, of a return to normalcy. Instead of having all this change, let's go back to times where things weren't changing as much. Uh, further hurting the Democrats' chance during this election was the creation of a third party, which was a segregation party, who wanted to bring segregation back to the United States. Uh, this, their candidate was George Wallace, the uh, governor of 
of uh, Georgia, who uh, I'm sorry, of Alabama, who wanted to uh, bring back segregation, and he got 13% of the national vote. Uh, he did carry uh, Los An or he did cut, uh, carry Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. July 21st, 1969, a pivotal date in U.S. history, especially for people in my generation. Uh, the many, many people from my generation dreamed of being astronauts and to do some of the great things like the members of, the, uh, of Gemini and Mercury programs and of Apollo. And on Ju July 21st, 1969, Neil Armstrong was the first uh, man to walk on the moon. Uh, he said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I personally believe that the moon landing was real. If you don't, that's cool. But if it's on the test, this is what the question would be, or this at least is what the answer would be. We've reached the end of yet another day. Uh, don't forget we have our tests coming up. Uh, so make sure you're ready for that. Please don't cocaine, please don't AIDS, and, and be nice to small animals. Even the delicious ones. They deserve a good life until we eat them. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the other side.